Combat sports. Combat sports. We have to talk about this. That is my dangerous individual. I'm going to make sad there. Get all quiet. And, and, it's, not, and it's not my passion. <laughs> no, no, no. By the way, I have passion for horses. But if the horses weren't stolen when she was younger, and someone tried to attract her on the street, she wouldn't have had a month to for granted her. And she would have ended up being with me. See how life works. It's my mum's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've always got to be out of your comfort zone. If you're a social coach, you work with these young people. Do you realize how much information that they get that we never did? Well, I didn't. If I'd have had one of these, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I'd be radically trying to change the world. I was brought up to challenge the curious. Absolutely. But they don't. The information they receive in their cerebral means they cannot filter the information and then determine what is woke, what is right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, or what the trend is, the passion. Me? Oh, right, no, yeah. I was, um, I was going eye to eye my oh, brother right. over there. Oh, He's, sorry. He's uh, just watching our kids grow. Sorry? Watching our kids grow. Watching the kids grow. To become? Better than, better than they were when they came. We've got a boxing club. Okay. So we get, them, we get the kids from knowing absolutely nothing from five years old to knowing so we can offload them to the, the amateur program or you know the other affiliated clubs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, wrestling same as like Brandon and a lot of other people in here. Um, I live in the area. I used to come over to the club quite a bit and just trying to set up a small club of my own uh, back in Shropshire, which is where I'm from. Okay. So, uh, it's so I'm going to the back row now because the gathering. <laughs> Yeah, uh, mine's uh, wrestling. Obviously, I've been wrestling with Ranger and Sab from a very young age and giving back to the younger kids now at the Wolverhampton Wrestling Club. Uh, my dad's there, Arjun Chima. And obviously, what we've learned and experienced through wrestling, giving back to the younger generation and see, see them develop. You know. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go right, right yeah. to it. Uh, same as, just enjoy sports, sports as a whole, and wrestling in the club. Brilliant. Coaching your kids into champions. Into champions. Mm -hmm. In life, on the rostrum, or both? Uh, both. Okay. In life and. Okay. Mine's sport as well. Sport. Uh, yeah, I think it's massive to help <coughs> achieve as well. <coughs> say art. I can find a way to drop bombs and spread a message. You forgot one? No, no, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> even young to laugh. It's more important. That is my special attention. So, yeah, by the way, um, when we look at what we do, and sorry, I will get your names by the end of this experience. You do something by way of arts therapy, which I was being nosy. But by the way, if you haven't got a good set of antennae, you're never about listening, you're always about hearing. That's emotional intelligence. That's phonic. That gives you a sense and feel for where you are and what you need to do. Therapeutic art. What, what is therapeutic art? Therapeutic art. Therapeutic art. Therapeutic art. Therapeutic art. Therapeutic art. Therapeutic art. With a lot of people in their CNH settings, social emotional mental health, okay. um, and I'm doing a lot of work in community settings as well now with young people and adults, just providing them with a toolkit to manage their emotional well being better. Every single tool, every single technique starts with that notion that 99% of it's between the ears. Welcome to those who just joined us. So you just pick up with the energy that I hope you will be able to share. Ultimately, you're the arts as well. Yeah, it's only sort of. At the weekend. Sort of art. At the weekend. Yeah. By the way, a social coach commits two hours a week. All of you here, I know, commit more than two hours a week. If you culminatively add all of those hours, believe it or not, you can change this country and possibly the rest of the Commonwealth for good. We don't have a youth ministry in this country. That's why we have failed over many, many, many decades 
to see young people taken seriously. This country doesn't like young people. Fact. We have children and young people's commissioners, but they do not shape and develop policies that can see young people realise their potential, and they're supposed to be the future taxpayers that look after you in older age. Is anyone seeking to depend on the current youth generation? By the way, they're going to be paying off the result of our last six months of political decisions and activity for the next 30 to 40 years. So those times are half hard. But by the way, adversity is not the reason that we cannot achieve great things. Young man, why are you here? Because dad told me something. For wrestling. You can be a champion. Super. Time to introduce yourself. I don't want him. No, <laughs> okay. Hey, everyone has a choice. I don't want him. I don't want him. Gary Cummings. Hi, Gary. I'm um, from here for Wake Stanley. You know, I'm just uh, in chat with the lads, you know. Oh, we'll that that in the future. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's this black on black crime thing we're trying to work out as well, a bit of an intergenerational thing, where we can handle being in the company of one another, rather than the only time I'm told that we do that is when we're on the streets, or even at church. Did you get fire and brimstone at church? I didn't go to church. I did. I did. And it was the biggest turn off. I'm very spiritual, by the way. I have no religious ideologies. That's all I want to come in the environments, learn from everybody, and then come up with a spirituality. Who raise your hand if you remember a certain man called Muhammad Ali? There we go. By the way, I spoke to Muhammad Ali said yesterday, and I'm not confused of what we're going to do with his lifetime and legacy. But the social coach has six core principles: confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. Those six core principles of the late Muhammad Ali shaped and characterized his life. As I said earlier, I lost my father at a young age. Now I was looking for young people who looked like me who would inspire me. He was one day doing it in the ring, out of the ring. He walked his talk. The warrior poet. Then I met him in Seattle at the Goodwill Games in the 80s. And it was a spiritual experience. And then just for those who say your journey doesn't get shaped, I then worked with the Muhammad Ali Center, which was opened in 2006. And the relationship is ongoing and very much inspires what it is you are doing now. And it's taken years. By the way, he planned his departure from the world for 10 years, to a decade. For those of you who are unsure of what you're part of as you congregate here today, just Google or go to YouTube and please just watch his funeral. It was singularly one of the greatest moments of the 21st century that reflected the 20th century. And only he and a few can transcend generations, transcend time, and provide hope and opportunity. Every single day, Muhammad would give a few hours of his day without any cameras, any notice. He'd literally knock on a door of an unsuspecting family. My name's Muhammad Ali. I'd like to come and have some tea with you. <laughs> and they'd be a bit stunned and welcomed into his home. Every single world championship fight he fought, he left 10% in whatever city or country of the world that he fought. The Muhammad Ali Center is in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're now discussing how we can bring that experience, because we have the technology and the VR interactive experience, so that you can experience what I have been able to witness experience on so many occasions. Because it will truly tell you of your greatness. Be great, do great things. All of this, as you said, how many of you have been to courses of this kind? How many workshops have you been to? Oh, okay. <laughs> In that case, it is also refreshing. By the way, just by scanning your software between your ears, I know the potential that Wolverhampton can provide to the West Midlands and beyond. Because my intention also is that you will become the social coach facilitators, because I can only pass every so often, but you become those that lead. You'll be the ones that go to Wolverhampton University. By the way, I've already been there, left a footprint that you will follow. As in Heathtown, it's been regenerated since I was last there.
but we did a lot of work there as well. That's the pathway. It's a full development pathway. UK coaching is accredited, but can take you wherever you want in the world. The aim ultimately is that you would be able to go into a community of any city, inner city, suburban or rural, and you should be able to engage with that network and do the work that you do or share or interact and make your continued efforts something of impact. I talked about the values, the citizenship, the emotional intelligence, that's it. I, by the way, those six core principles I still work at. Not everybody has them. Some have some of them and aspire to others. That's why we're always learning. That's why it's a life journey and experience. Rights and responsibilities. Most of our young people want the rights, but they don't want the responsibilities. Both go hand in hand. Emotional intelligence. All of this, you have. If you don't, sharpen it, infuse it, enrich it. All of the combat sports can develop those skill sets because they are primarily a martial art. I always say I was never a sportsman, I was an artist. And I was able to express myself through a combat sport and then translate that into life. Skill sets, all elements that you will relate to. We all know that the safeguarding is required, but the plan of preparation. How many of you are digitally aware of how important these devices are in the work that you do. Okay, for those of you who are, these are the most interactively active aspects of all young hearts and minds. And unless we master it and have some understanding and appreciation of it, we are being left behind. There are degree courses on digital, all forms of IT, coding. Students are starting the courses knowing more than the lecturers. And they're walking off campus. They're developing degree courses online. Columbia University is giving all of its degree courses free online. Why? They want the data. They want what's going on between your ears. Artificial intelligence is replacing the emotional intelligence. 